we have our third and final Tom for the day. Uh, this is Tom Gaiman. Uh, he moved here from the UK two years ago and he switched from working in social media to become a Ruby dev. Um, so he works with Disco Labs, which builds custom apps for the Shopify platform. Um, and his talk today is about JRuby and his curiosity of all things Ruby. Uh, hello. Uh, just before I get started, uh, just a quick thing. I got a bit envious of everyone's really slick presentations, uh, so I have added a bit more pizzazz, and I think you're going to be very impressed. Uh, I am feeling a bit insecure about it, though, so if you see a bit of pizzazz, just give me a bit of a cheer and, you know, build back my confidence. Uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, what the hell is a JRuby Adventures Beyond MRI? A little bit about me, my name is Tom. Uh, as mentioned, I work for Disco Labs. Recent name change, don't worry about it. Um, and as I recently discovered, I am a noob. Uh, this crushing realization came uh, running this command. So I wanted to see what versions of Ruby I could install. I'm just really going to quickly restart my presentation because my timer is not running correctly. There we go. Uh, see what versions of Ruby I could install. And I came up with this list. Um, quite frankly, excessive, but fine. I understand it's just different versions of Ruby. But it also came back with all these. What the flipping heck are all these? <laughs> Here... <laughs> so here's poor old me trying to install some Ruby, and now I don't even know what Ruby means. Uh, so I'm in a full philosophical and existential crisis, uh, so let's try and tackle that. So first up, uh, here are all the types of Ruby that were returned to me. Uh, so we got um, JRuby and Ruby. Uh, so we're going to spend most of our time tackling the first two and the difference between them. Uh, then we've got Rubinius and Truffle Ruby. Uh, we're going to briefly glance at those. Uh, and then we've got MRuby Maglev and Ruby Enterprise Edition. Uh, these are going to get a one-liner, but just so you understand what they are. And this is going to be the structure of the talk. So these are the questions I had. What is JRuby? How is it different from normal Ruby? What even defines what Ruby is? Does JRuby have the same syntax as normal Ruby? Why would you use JRuby? Are there any downsides? What is Rubinius and what is Truffle Ruby? And what's the rest of that Motley crew? Um, I want this talk to basically provide you with a conceptual framework uh, to help understand JRuby and other Ruby implementations. Uh, and I understand for some people, this might be like teaching a grandmother to suck eggs. Um, sorry for non-native English speeches. Get someone to explain that to you. Um, but if we start from the beginning, uh, then we can bring everyone on the journey with us. So, there we go. Okay, feeling confident. Uh, okay, so JRuby is the Ruby programming language implemented in Java. So what does that mean? Okay, let's break it down. Let's tackle this bit first. What is the Ruby programming language? If we can talk about the programming language separate from some implementation, then it must exist, exist independently. So what does that look like? What the <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Got caught out by my own things. <laughs> essentially, I, I changed these slides this morning, which is essentially like force pushing to production. <laughs> Don't do it. OK. Um, right, so what defines what Ruby is? So initially, when there was basically just one Ruby uh, that Matt's invented, um, the Ruby language was defined by what the Ruby language could do. So if you wanted to know what Ruby was, you looked at Ruby and that's what it was. A uh, bit circular, um, but as the number of Ruby implementations began to grow, they wanted a bit more of a, a defined standard. Um, there was a bit of a play with an ISO standard. Uh, it was created in 2010. It's based on Ruby 1.8.7. Uh, but it's written like an ISO standard, so essentially useless to most people. Um, but the more interesting one is the Ruby specs. Um, so the Ruby specs are basically like a huge test suite uh, which tests all the features of the Ruby language. Uh, and this is how the language is largely defined today um, and how the alternative Rubies check their compatibility to make sure they're doing Ruby things. Uh, so example, here's uh, a test spec for puts, uh, massively truncated. Turns out puts is actually much more complicated than you think. Um, but we can basically see that if you put something, it should return nil, and the scratch card, which is recording the I.O., uh, basically should record these things with uh, line breaks. 
So if you get this test suite to pass, you basically got yourself some Ruby. So Ruby is the, Ruby, Ruby is the programming language that is defined by the Ruby specs. Fantastic. So now we're on to the next bit. What does it mean for the Ruby programming language, the language defined by the Ruby specs, to be implemented in Java? So this is my basic understanding of how Ruby works. <laughs> You've got, you run your Ruby script, um, some kind of magic happens, and then you get some output, in this case, hello world. Uh, and to someone understand what it means for Ruby to be implemented in Java, uh, we need to have a look at that step in a bit more detail. So we'll zoom in there, <laughs> and I'll, I think you'll agree, this is much clearer. Um, but we will go into a little bit more detail. Um, so it turns out, whilst Ruby is a really great language for humans to understand, CPUs can't understand that well, because largely because they're lazy at school. Um, so to keep the CPU happy, uh, we need to convert it to something the CPU can understand, or in this case, machine code, uh, so it can execute those instructions. And now the crux of the step of understanding Ruby implementations is in that circle there. So let's zoom in again. So this is our lovely Ruby, our source code, uh, and this is some interpretation and compilation step. Uh, now, at this term in the journey, at this point in the journey, you may hear the term virtual machine thrown around, uh, and this is basically where that comes into play, uh, but it's essentially the step where the source code is interpreted and run on the CPU. Uh, it's basically translating our rubies to something the CPU can understand. So, when you have your language plus, your comp uh, plus this kind of compilation interpretation step, that is a Ruby implement implementation. Implementation is a really hard word to say. Um, so if you implement that in C, you end up with C Ruby or MRI or standard Ruby, normal Ruby, the Ruby that we all know and love. So let's dig into that step in a little bit more detail. This is the basic steps that happens between your lovely Ruby and some machine code. Um, and this is all implemented in C. So uh, you start with your source code, put hello world. Uh, that gets tokenized and turns into something like this. Um, but what we really care about is these two. Uh, so we have puts, which is an identifier, and then the string, hello world. Uh, so that looks like something like this. Um, and then we're on to the next step. So that's our tokenized code. Then we want to turn that into AST nodes. So AST nodes are basically uh, abstract syntax tree nodes. They look something like this. Um, you can see the puts, you can see the hello world. Um, in a diagrammatic form, that looks something a bit more like this. And so this is essentially the structure of your code. Uh, I'm not going to go into this, any of this in too much detail, but just to give you a high-level understanding of what's going on. Uh, and then this abstract, abstract AST nodes are um, converted into YARV instructions. Uh, so YARV is, stands for yet another Ruby virtual machine. Um, and that's basically uh, what instructs the virtual machine to, to send the machine code to the CPU and run it. Uh, and then you end up with a machine code which actually runs on the CPU. So if JRuby is the Ruby, Ruby programming language implemented in Java, <laughs> this is what it looks like. <laughs> so essentially all this means is the part that handles turning our lovely Ruby into machine code is written in Java rather than Ruby. So, um, looks like this, um, and you can see, notice here that instead of our Yav oh, change the slide. You can see instead of our Yav instructions, we end up with Java bytecode, which looks something like this. It's slightly more verbose, um, but you get the idea. So it runs through the same process, but instead of Yav instructions, we end up with Java bytecode. And this Java bytecode can be run on the JVM, which is the Java virtual machine, which we'll get into in a little sec. So that is essentially JRuby. That's what it is. It's the, it's the Ruby programming language implemented in Java. Now, this is slightly unsatisfying, um, because just to know what something is isn't that useful. Uh, so we're going to go into a little bit more detail um, and compare it more to Ruby, and then also look why it is. Like, why would you choose JRuby over anything else? Um, so does JRuby have the same syntax as normal Ruby? Yes. Um, it's not like Crystal or Elixir or something that's very similar to Ruby, but not quite Ruby. Um, but 
it's worth knowing that with most alternative Ruby imp implementations, um, the language is generally a subset. So JRuby is pretty well featured, um, and I think it's currently covering uh, up to 2.5. Obviously, we're now on 2.6 and beyond. Um, so most alternative Ruby implementations will do some subset of the language, but can be more or less depending on the implementation. Important to note with JRuby, you can run Rails in it, so that's fun. So here's where we are. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no. Um, so why would you use JRuby over normal Ruby? Why, why is there another Ruby? Um, so as I was researching this, I was Googling Java, and I learned that Java was originally developed by Ryan Gosling, <laughs> which made me laugh. Uh, and that is completely beside the point. Um, so this is essentially um, why you would run JRuby. Uh, it's quicker. Uh, so these are some slides that uh, Charles Nutter, the lead dev from JRuby, kindly lent me. Um, and this is basically benchmarking a Rails app um, and processing requests. So more requests per second is better. So JRuby's quicker. Cool. Um, as with any benchmark stuff, mileage may vary, yada, 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 but let's just say it's quicker. Uh, and it's quicker largely because of the JVM. So the JVM is the Java virtual machine. So if you're thinking, virtual machines, what's that? It basically comes into this kind of step in that process. Uh, so the JVM is the culmination of 20 years of kind of research and development, and they've answered all these super hard computer science problems like garbage collection and just-in-time compilation and like all this sort of crazy stuff. Um, and it basically, it's the Java virtual machine which enables all this kind of goodies. Uh, so it has just-in-time compilation, so it offers lots of opportunities for optimization while the code's running. And the longer you run your code, it means that it can run quicker. Uh, portability, so there's the Java idea of write once, run anywhere. So you can now run Ruby in places where you previously couldn't run Ruby. Um, it's got great Java compatibility, so in the same way that it's C Ruby or normal Ruby, um, you can run C libraries. With JRuby, you can run Java libraries. So if that's your bag, great. Um, and it also has great tooling. So you can get all these kind of infographical tools. You can see your like garbage heap and memory profiles and all this sort of crazy stuff. Uh, I'm going to link you to a talk that uh, Charles Nutter and the other dev, I can't remember his name, uh, of the JRuby project did. And they, they go into a lot more detail about that kind of stuff. One thing you'll hear loads about, though, if you start digging into Alternative Ruby implementations is that everyone bloody loves a threat. <laughs> uh, so you hear about multi-threading and native threads and green threads and real threads and thread count and Egyptian cotton and kink. No, <laughs> oh, sorry. Some of those, some of those are bed sheets actually. But you hear a lot about threads. So we're going to take a quick detour into processes, threading, concurrency, and parallelism. Uh, the analogy that follows is is uh, slightly adapted by the analogy given by Jesse Storimer in a book, Working with Ruby Threads. It's really great if you're uh, looking at working with Ruby and Threads. I would recommend a read. Mm. But the general idea is this. If we think of a process as some development agency, um, so when you start CRuby, uh, you start a new process, and that process has one thread. Um, and we can think of that thread as a developer working inside that agency. Um, so the developer can, pause, can perform some work, it can share resources with other developers, um, and things like that. So by default, Ruby has one main thread on which it performs its work. And that leads, so the standard model is serial execution. So with serial execution, let's say the work they're performing is producing some software with feature A and feature B. Uh, our developer will work on feature A until that's finished, and then they'll work on feature B. Let's say both features take half a day, the whole thing will take a whole day. Um, this is, can be, um, wasteful is the wrong word. Uh, wasteful, let's say, wasteful. Um, <laughs> the, so the problem is that each of these features has a long running test suite. So while they're doing their thing, running their test suite, they're just waiting around for the test suite to finish uh, passing. Um, and this is essentially uh, one of the problems of serial execution is that if there's some task, let's say some blocking I.O., you need to write to some slow web server or something like that, you're just sitting around and waiting for that thing to happen. 
So this is what CRuby does by default. And you might be thinking, just add more threads. Uh, so just add more developers to the agency, uh, and you can just kind of do work at twice the speed, um, and that sounds great. And you can add more threads in CRuby, but uh, in CRuby, there is something known as the global interpreter lock. And the global interpreter lock is a feature of Ruby that means only one thread or one developer can execute code at one time. So if you jump back to an agency analogy, uh, imagine the kind of agency owner is super paranoid about, I don't know, something, and they're not using Git. Uh, they're not using version control, and they're really worried developers are going to overwrite each other's code. So they're like, to lock down on this, we're going to have one power cord in the office. And you can only do work if you have the power cord. <laughs> and this is essentially the global interpreter log. There's one power cord, and you can only do work when you have the power cord. And you might be thinking, oh, no, you might. <laughs> uh, and this leads, this, um, this is better than serial execution. Um, we move into a model called concurrent execution. This is better than serial execution, because say, say they're running their test suite on some CI platform, they can push up their code, it's running on the CI, the other developer grabs the lead, they can start running on their code, push it out to CI, push it back. So they can start switching between those features quite quickly, uh, and let's say they can complete the work in three quarters of a day. And this model is called concurrent execution, which is basically, you're, let's say you're only working on one thread, but you're kind of briefly switching between them. And you might be thinking, that sounds dumb. However, if you think about Ruby's philosophy of making developers happy, it's much nicer to not have to worry about potential issues with working multiple threads. Because when you're working with multiple threads, you can have issues with, say, overwriting uh, some value stored in memory, or in this case, some developer overwriting your code. Um, and that kind of really aligns with Ruby's core fundamentality of make it a really nice language to use. With JRuby, however, it's power chords galore. Uh, so with JRuby, they don't have this global interpreter lock. So basically, you can open up parallel execution. And now we're already cooking on gas. So we can have two developers that are working at the same time. And if they're really careful that they don't start overwriting each other's code, things can be much more performant. And is this, what, this is one of the reasons why JRuby can be so performant and why so many other alternative Ruby implementations bloody love a thread. Because it's a really powerful feature if used correctly. Detour over. Now, are there any downsides? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it is, it's slightly longer to warm up and start up. Um, so the graphs tend to look about like this. Again, uh, appropriated from Charles Nutter. Um, and uh, so we can see here the JRuby graph starts a bit slower, but once it gets cranking, it is more performant. It tends to be more memory intensive. Uh, you do lose the C library compatibility, uh, though with JRuby, uh, they've ported over a lot of the stuff you might use, so like Nokagiri and things like that. Uh, and because it, as I mentioned before, it is a subset, you do lose some of those kind of new fancy bells and whistles. So here's where we are. So on to Rubinius, Truffle Ruby, and the rest of that Motley crew. And we can use this, this knowledge we've just got from JRuby to understand what the rest of these things are. That was a pretty good one, actually. Uh, so what is Rubinius? So Rubinius is confusingly Ruby implemented in Ruby, uh, but also C++. So with Rubinius, a lot of the core library is written with Ruby, and then there's a C++ kind of doing C++ things, uh, basically being fast. Um, but with Rubinius, you have no global, no global interpreter lock, so you can make use of multi-threading. Uh, you use generational garbage collection and just a kind of compiler to speed things up. Uh, and it also supports C extensions. So C extensions plus multi-threading, plus some fancy compiler stuff, means it's a bit quicker. Um, <laughs> that was a cracker. Um, while you're researching this, make sure not to get distracted by this kind of thing. Um, but uh, so Truffle Ruby is quite interesting. Uh, so it also runs on the JVM, like JRuby. Uh, but they've written a separate just-in-time compiler called Graal. Um, now, Graal is quite interesting, because they're trying to create this kind of universal virtual machine. Um, so that's kind of the layer on which you kind of run your code. Um, and Truffle is the library for building those abstract syntax trees we wrote earlier, uh, wrote earlier, saw earlier. 
Uh, and so the idea is with Graal is you can use it to run all sorts of languages like Python, JavaScript, da da da. Uh, it's super fast, it's one of the fastest implementations, uh, but it can't run Rails yet. Um, so if Ruby's your thing, it's really great. Uh, shout out to Chris Seaton, who's also one of the lead devs for helping me with that slide. Now onto these three. Uh, just word of warning, if you think Maglev and Ruby Enterprise Edition sound cool, they're largely dead now, um, but I'm including them because they were returned in our original list. Uh, so MRuby's Ruby but embedded, uh, so it's like a much lighter weight version of Ruby, uh, popular for things like using Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and Internet of Things and things like that, things where a more lightweight implementation is useful. Uh, Maglev is super hard to explain, apparently, um, but essentially it was Ruby but kind of distributed uh, on the Smalltalk VM. Uh, if you're interested in that, I would check out the announcement RailsConf video, because uh, that would be a talk in itself on how that works. Uh, and Ruby Enter Enterprise Edition is Ruby, but like Enterprise. Um, but it was essentially solving some of the problems Ruby had pre 1.9. Um, and a lot of those changes were merged back in or circumvented in another way. Um, also made by Fusion uh, of the popular passenger web server, who also have, used to have the single greatest web development agency logo I have ever seen <laughs> um, of its era, I am sure. Uh, so let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. OK, so there's a bunch of different Ruby implementations. They're just the Ruby programming language implemented in different ways. If some language can pass the Ruby specs, it's Ruby, let's say. JRuby is the Ruby programming language implemented in Java. It can run Rails. And you probably choose it for the performance game. Hashtag threats for life. <laughs> let's get it trending, guys. Um, and that's essentially it. So uh, I've got some references. Uh, so the Working with Ruby Threads uh, is a really great book, and Ruby on the Microscope is Really great, but also like really intense. So if you want to like, go really deep into how Ruby works, great book. Um, a lot of it's also based on this talk, uh, of which I stole a couple of the slides. They let me. Um, so uh, you can either type that in or just go to a much better jrubytalk.tomgaiman.com. Um, and just while I do have a captive audience, I would love to talk about my little side project, um, working with my partner. Uh, it's all about amplifying the voices of amazing women, um, not just those who've made it in some narrow sense. Uh, so if you know a woman who thinks has some amazing things to say, hint, hint, that might also be you, um, then go to thisisartemis.com and use the nominate form. Thank you.